Hello everyone, welcome back to the forge. Now today we're going to be starting work on this project right here. This will be a D-guard buoy with a long swooping clip. We're going to be using a piece of leaf spring for this, 5160. So let's get the forge lit up and let's get to work.
All right, and that's where we're, gonna, where we're gonna stop at for today. We got pretty close to our drawing, close enough that I can make a template of this and get it almost exact. Uh, I appreciate you for joining me today. It was nice to get back out here in the workshop without it being so hot and having a nice break from 100 plus degrees and getting back to swinging a hammer. Uh, now today we're gonna be jumping back on our D-Guard buoy project. I have cleaned the perimeter up. I have roughed in the bevels. We're fixing to toss this bad boy in the forge for some normalizing cycles and then we'll be ready to quench it. At which point we will grind in our clip portion here and hand sand it and then turn our attention to the guard handle and get this wrapped up. Alright, let's get on it. All right, came through the heat treat grate. Uh, we did pick up a little bit of a warp out here on the tip, but I went ahead and came in and scribed. Uh, you can see the silver line here. See if it'll pick that up. I need to grind the flat portion of the tip here into that silver line, and we'll be good to go and we'll get back into doing the bevels and get it cleaned up and get ready to start hand sanding. All right, let's get after it. All right, I got my layout fluid applied to the cutting edge and to the clip up here. I'm gonna go ahead and scrub some lines and then we'll get in there and get the bevel squared away. All right, we got everything ground in. Pretty much ready for hand sanding, so I'm gonna come on in here and I'm gonna remove this section right here. I'm gonna come in and grind it up close to the edge here. Get it cleaned up and then we'll ready to start hand sanding. All right, so here's where we are. I've got the blade completely ground. This ready for hand sanding. And I've went ahead and came in and <clears throat> slotted the guard. Went in with my rotary carver and inset where the Ricasso area of the knife will slide down in there. Now, the way that I did this is, I don't have any video of it, uh, but I just scribed the center point of this bar. This is an inch and a half wide. Measured down, gave myself a little bit of allowance, made sure it was a little bit too long for my purposes here at the back, uh, where it will swoop up above the back portion of the blade here. Gave myself a little bit of extra space there. Found out where exactly where I wanted the tang to go through at, and then I just laid the tang across it and took my scribe, marked on either side. Uh, since I already have my center line, so went in where, they, where the marks joined at, used the punch, punched my holes, uh, found the drill bit that is the, the drill bit that is close to the thickness of the tang, drilled the holes, drilled the holes, went to the mill, milled it out, <coughs> fit it up, hammered it up as far as it would go, used my needle files and worked this area until it went all the way up to the Ricasso area and then came in. Uh, put some Dicom layout fluid on, 
at which point I put my knife on here and then scribed around it with the scribe and used the rotary carver and just cut a little bit of a recess out to slide it in. Um, so now we're going to move on to addressing, we got to do a spacer that's going to go into this guard. We're going to go ahead and drill our handle material, which is desert ironwood, and then we'll start shaping the guard and everything else to get ready to address, <coughs> excuse me, get ready to address the tang on that end. I do want to share something with you right quick. So a lot of times when people do D-guard knives, the D-guard gets a little crazy. I know the first ones I did, the D-guard got, it, it was just too big. It looked kind of goofy because it was oversized. And this is not a sponsorship or nothing like that. It's just something that I came across on KnifeKits.com. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Harvey Dean knives. And of course, this is not one of his handmade Master Bladesmith quality knives, but it is a reproduction that he does. And it's made of stainless steel and everything. But the reason I bought it is for references. Uh, get it open here. It's not bad. I mean, it's a good looking stainless steel reproduction kit. And it's nice and sharp and everything else. It might be a good way to get into to making a knife if you just want to make one to have something neat. But it's made off the specs of the Bowie knife he makes on his D-Guard Bowie DVD, as well as the ones that he's known for. And I bought it solely to have this template right here of this D-Guard. Now, some of you may say, hey, that's not the way to do it. To me, that's the way I'm going to do it. I mean, Harvey Dean is a proven knife maker. He's in the Hall of Fame and everything else. And he used to be chairman of the American Blazement Society. Like I said, I really, really look up to his work. And so I think that his flow of a D-Guard looks best. And so I'm going to use this D-Guard out of this kit, not on the knife, but I'm going to use it as a template to make my D-Guard from. Um, because I'm going to do a lot of things different with mine. But like I said, it'll work great. And if you're looking for a knife kit to put together that would look kind of neat, I mean, you can kind of imagine some nice desert ironwood on there. Yeah, that would look pretty good. And they actually sell kits on there too that actually come with the handle material. But it's got the pins and, and everything to put it together. But like I said, this was only bought so I can use this right here. Uh, as a template. So, that being said, let's go ahead and get back to work on my knife. Alright, for my spacer, I'm going to be using a piece of quarter inch mild steel. And I'm going to do the exact same process I did a while ago on doing the, the D guard. So, I'm just going to come in here and give myself some extra metal to work with. Let's see if I can get that where you can see what I'm doing a little better. Yes, I know actually this tang will be more like this, but that's okay for it to be here. Let's make it go up to where we need it to go up, no problem. So that's what we need. Let's go out here and punch it, and then we'll mill it out. got everything set up here. I kind of like the flow of the grain like this right here. Uh, I'm about to come in and we're going to kind of tilt this handle down. Probably about right there. So I'm going to go ahead and come in and I'm going to draw a line around the tank here. Then 
angle to drill it out. I'm also going to sand the angle here so it mates up properly with where I want it to be. We got our handle fit up. I'm going to come in here and mark now so I can grind the front edge of this. Alright, now I'm going to cut my handle material to length. I'm looking for around four and a half inches. I have decided I want to do another quarter inch spacer here on the bottom before shaping the D-guard. And so what I've done here, I just came up in here and lined this up. Just look down over the top of it. We're just going to drill a quarter inch hole is all we're going to do. Mark it like that. I'm going to want to go between this line and this line right in here. So let's go punch it and then we'll get it drilled out. I'll be right back. Alright, got our bottom spacer on. I'm going to go ahead and mark it here. Get with the bandsaw and cut it off. And we will come back in here and put guide pins in for this spacer and this bottom spacer. And then we'll get on to shaping our D guard. Alright, so it's time to shape our D guard. And so what I've got here is a piece of 2x4 that I have cut the shape of our D-guard. And I drilled a hole through it. Not quite centered, doesn't really matter, it'll work. And what I'm going to do is I will put a piece of all thread through here, like so. And then we're going to put the upper part our D-guard into here, put our washers on, go ahead and tighten it down, okay, I'm going to cinch this down nice and tight, clamp it in the vise, and start bending it over. Alright, I'm going to drill the hole for the all thread on the tang to come through. Uh, I did mess up my order of operation. I should have shaped this guard before doing this. It'll just make it a little bit more of a challenge to shape it once I bend it, but that's okay. I'm pretty sure I can I can do it. If I can't, then we'll just do it all over again. Sounds like a plan. Let's get this drilled. All right, after some fiddling and straightening things, that's where we are so far. Get that cleaned up. We should have a nice D guard. This will be shaped. This will not be the attachment here on the back. This is just a piece to kind of get everything lined up. Uh, I will be making a new piece for this that will have the pommel nut that insets inside of the end piece here. So, pretty happy so far.
Let's get on with it. All right, I got the line scribed on the guard here, here on the top, on the front. I'm leaving the bottom oversized for now until I get all that sorted. Uh, so this should be fun. Never have ground one that's already been shaped. So let's get on the grinder and get taken care of. All right, so I got everything shaped up, got everything put on. Now it's just time for final cleanup. Blew these pieces. I just uh, what I did was on the on the pommel here was I drilled and tapped a piece, screwed it on. It will be pinned over on the end, and I will have a keeper pin that goes in up through here that keeps everything in line. Should look pretty good on the back end of it. Uh, with that being said, we can go us cleaned up, and I'll catch you in a minute with a reveal. guys i appreciate y'all for checking this video out if you would hit the subscribe button down below ring the notification bell to notify them of this content as it posts learned a lot on this project appreciate y'all for coming along y'all have a good one i'll catch you on the next one bye bye